Praise the Lord, we are in the river of life. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. And the Lord was just showing me, we just had a rain. And as I went out and I looked at my garden and my hillside, I saw it was saturated with water because it had rained. Every single plant, every single piece of soil was covered with water, was moist. And the Lord showed me that's what he wants us to be like in prayer, saturated, spending two hours in prayer, spending time seeking his face, not just saying, oh, I'll pray for you. Oh, God bless her. Amen. But be saturated in prayer versus when I have my sprinklers, they water the plants, they water the hillside, but it's not like the rain. We get some nice sprinkles and the plants stay alive, but it's not that richness. It's not that healthy feeling when the rain comes and just covers everything with that water, that life-giving water. In the same way as you're praying, as you're reading your word, as you're spending time with God, quality time, the Lord will saturate you with his presence. The Lord will fill you. And the other day, it was very interesting, yesterday, the enemy did not want me to pray. It was early in the morning, and it was like I felt this spiritual darkness trying to attack me so that I would start my day without prayer. And it's like I had no desire to read the word, but I knew that I needed to. And so I picked up the word, and all of a sudden I just started reading and praying and entering in out of sheer discipline. And I felt that darkness, I felt that evil spirit, that oppressing spirit just leave. And the power of God came with his peace and his love and his joy. And even this whole weekend, I just felt like I wasn't um, in a place of peace. I felt like emotionally anxious and, and unstable. And that all went away yesterday as I waited on God and as I prayed. So he wants us to be saturated with his presence. And beauty for ashes, that is the focus. We read the word. We pray. We want to be saturated with the Holy Spirit, with the presence of the Lord. Let's bow our heads right now and let's pray. God, I lift up those who are facing an impossible situation. I lift up those who are facing a chronic illness in their body, a terminal illness in their body. God, you are the supernatural healer. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit of darkness. Satan, get your hold off of the children of God. Spirit of death, be broken now in the name of Jesus. You shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. God, just breathe new life into your children. Breathe into those bodies. Quicken them according to your word, Father God. Only say the word and they shall be healed. And God, right now we are waiting on you to say the word, to speak the word of healing. You said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In the name of Jesus, just extend your hand. And as I lay hands on you through the television, through the airwaves, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall be healed. Lord God, you said, if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and let them anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith. Right now we are speaking and saying the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And if they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven. Oh God, we just thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Father God, that you're lifting your children up, that you're letting your light shine brighter and brighter and brighter into their lives. Hallelujah. Touch. Touch. Have faith right now. Believe. 
Have faith right now. Don't doubt. Only believe and you will see the glory of God. God is moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your faith move the hand of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're healing that person who's having trouble seeing. You're healing that person who had a stroke. You're healing that person who's having trouble walking. Hallelujah. You're healing that person who has cirrhosis of the liver. You're healing that person who has hepatitis C. You're healing that person that has lupus and Epstein-Barr. You're healing that person that has chronic pain in their back. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We look to you. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the savior of the world. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord, that you are moving, that you are working, Jesus. The power of the Lord is present to heal. Jesus, Jesus, I see peace, peace in the midst of the storm. The Lord is giving you peace, peace, that peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Don't doubt, only believe, and you'll see the glory of God. Today we're going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And we're talking about carnal Christians, fleshly Christians, Christians who are walking in sin, Christians who are feeding their addiction, and we're talking about mature Christians, those who are spiritually mature, who are able to eat meat and not just milk. I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Paul is saying, I can't speak to you as mature spiritual Christians because you're carnal. You're walking in the flesh. You're giving in to your addiction, to drugs and alcohol and nicotine. You're giving in to anger, lust, fornication, adultery, he said, I can't speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. If you're allowing sin to reign in your mortal body, you are a babe in Christ. If you are giving in to pride and walking in that pride, if you are giving in to greed and lying and cheating and stealing, you are carnal. You are not ready for the strong meat of the word. And you have to make a decision. Do you want God and everything that he has for you? All the power that he wants to put in you and flow through you to minister to the people? Or do you want to keep on stealing? Do you want to keep on looking at that pornography? Do you want to keep on getting drunk? 1 Corinthians 3, 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for you were not able to bear it. If you're a carnal Christian, you're not able to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You're not able to understand the deep things. That's the meat of the gospel. As a mature Christian, I've served God all my life. I will try to tell somebody something and they don't understand it and they don't get it because they're a young Christian, they're a baby Christian, and they're still being delivered from the power of sin. He said, Paul says, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for you were not able to bear it. You couldn't handle the meat due to your immaturity, due to the sin in your life. Yet now are ye able, for you are yet carnal. It, it, if, hallelujah, yet not, you are not able to bear it. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? You're getting in fights with each other. 
You're getting angry at each other, envious of what God has blessed somebody else with. You're angry. You're striving with them. And the Bible says the man of God must not strive, but be patient, apt to teach, right? The man of God must not strive. If it looks like it's getting into an argument, as my dad would always say, shut up. State your opinion one time. If nobody receives it, call it a day. We're not going to get into an argument. For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? So I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. Oh, I know so-and-so. Oh, I know this big televangelist. Oh, I got my picture taken with him, right? Hallelujah. No. He's saying, if you're saying you're of one versus being of the other, you are carnal. I always say, different locations, different people, but we are one, one spirit in the Lord, one Lord, one God, one baptism, one Father who is over all and in all, right? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. So praise God, these wonderful ministers, televangelists, pastors, they're ministering to you. But you're not of them, you're of Christ. Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. If God doesn't give the increase, it isn't going to happen. I can put a seed in the ground. I can cover it with soil. I can water it. But if God doesn't make it grow, if God doesn't cause a sprout to sprout up, nothing is going to happen. I can do everything in the whole world to try to make that seed grow. But if God doesn't make it grow, it will not grow. It is God who gives the increase. God will bless the work of your hands. God will bless you as you're on that job every single day, on time, leaving when you're supposed to leave, not before, maybe even staying a little bit later. God will give the increase. When it's time for a promotion, you will see the hand of God touch your supervisor's heart touch your manager's heart because you have been so faithful and so consistent but it's going to be God who gives the increase it's going to be God who blesses you and it's just very interesting just the other day I got a call from the British Broadcasting Company and they called me up and they wanted another interview with me so it was actually like a radio slash podcast interview So they kind of gave me the parameters and what they wanted. And then they said they wanted me to sing a song because they heard I sang. So I went ahead and made up a little song and I sent it to them. And right now they're currently editing their show as, as they see fit. But only God can open that door. Only God can put you in a place where the Lord is raising you up and lifting you up so you can touch greater, greater numbers of people. You can touch more lives. It is God who gives the increase. God gives the increase. God brings the blessing. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Well, hallelujah, that pride is just going to go out the window. Neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but it's God that gives the increase. I can pray for healing all that I want, but it's God who heals. I can speak healing, I can proclaim healing, but it's only the power of God being released where his power meets my faith that actually manifests that healing in your mortal body. God gives the increase. And we are praying today that we would be saturated with the power of God, that we would be filled, that we would be protected by his spirit. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. He that plants and he that waters are one. 
Paul that plants and Apollos who waters are one. They're one in the spirit of the Lord. That's why the Lord is saying you're carnal because you're causing division. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. No, we're one. Oh, I'm of that church down the street. Oh, no, I go to that church in that other city. You are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor every man shall receive his own reward not somebody else's reward but according as god has called you according to the giftings that god has given you you will receive your reward according to your labor that's so powerful hallelujah and Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So get out there and labor in the kingdom of heaven. Do what God has called you to do. You will receive a reward. You alone will stand before the judgment seat of God. And God is the righteous judge. He is the one who will judge you. So don't worry about what people are saying. Don't worry about what people are thinking. As long as you're doing what God tells you to do, you are a-okay. Hallelujah. Our job is to please God. Man's going to try to bring us down. Man's going to try to destroy us. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, will lift you up. God will bless you and God will give you that reward. For we are laborers together with God. You are laborers together with God. He needs you. You are his hands. You are his feet. I'm here preaching the word of God, but God is the one who's releasing his power for signs and wonders and miracles. God is the one who's releasing his power to deliver you from that oppression and that depression and that suicidal spirit. You know, suicide is a demonic spirit, and we break that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that lie of the enemy. If you will endure, if you will persevere, you will see God's glory be revealed. You will see his promises be fulfilled in your life, and you will see God turn everything around for good. And I am one who has had great tragedy, great trials, hallelujah, in life. And I identify with those who are suffering. I identify with those who have had to just push and persevere and break through and pray through in the spirit to get to that place of victory, to get to that place of spiritual joy and peace. But it's through prayer. It's through the power of God that God is going to deliver you. Satan would try to discourage you. Satan would try to bring you down. And people are mean People are really, really mean, but hallelujah, just keep serving God because God is going to open doors for you and God is going to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be exalted. You're going to be rewarded. And all those people who laughed at you and said it couldn't be done and, and looked down on you and scorned you, hallelujah, God is going to raise you up. God is going to lift you up. So you are God's husbandry. You are God's building husbandry. That's the person who takes care of the cattle or the livestock. That's the person who takes care of the vineyard and the farm. Hallelujah. And the crops. You are taking care of God's vineyard. And it's a spiritual vineyard. You're growing souls. You're taking care of people, human beings. You are God's husbandry. You are laboring together in the kingdom of heaven. And you are God's building. He lives in you. You house the spirit of the Lord. You are also the temple of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. God lives in you. Your body is God's temple. You are the church, which is his body. 
That's why we have to keep our bodies pure and sinless because he lives inside us. We need to be pure and holy in both body, in the things we do and in the things we say, as well as in spirit, what we believe, how we pray. 1 Corinthians 3.10, according to the grace of God, which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Paul is saying, I laid the foundation. Now be careful how you build on that foundation. There are many teachers out there, but you want to find the best ones. You want to find the ones who are preaching the word of God. You want to find the ones who are moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, who are, hallelujah, have the fullness of everything that God has for his children. When you're in school, hallelujah, you think about people, you think about teachers who were good and not so good. I had a great teacher in seventh grade named Miss Dunn. Praise the Lord. She was excellent. And the things that she taught me, even about music as well as literature and English, I still remember those vocabulary words. She challenged us. She was an excellent teacher. Find those excellent teachers and read the word and then you're going to know whose doctrine is lined up with the word of God or not. So let every man take heed how he builds thereon. For another foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Praise God. The foundation has to be Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So you can build on that foundation, gold, gold works, pure heart, persevering, laboring, right on target, silver, a little less on target, precious stones, praise God, or you can build on that foundation, wood, hay, or stubble. You're compromised, sometimes you're serving God, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're doing drugs, sometimes you're not, you know, sometimes you're taking pills, sometimes you're not. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, the day of trial, the day of tribulation, the day of pain, the day of suffering, the day of sacrifice. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The fire is going to try you. The fire is going to test you. What does the fire look like? All of a sudden, you may get a bad report from the doctor. Are you still going to serve God? Are you going to still have faith in God? You may lose your job. Are you still going to praise the Lord? Are you going to still honor him and worship him? Maybe God promised you various things in the ministry and you don't see anything happening. Are you still going to keep on going? Don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will prosper if you don't faint. So the day will reveal, are your works of wood, hay, and stubble? They're going to be burned up, but then it says, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If your work survives the fire, you're going to get a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. And we're talking about carnal Christians, people who feel they can party, oh, but they're still Christians, or they can live in sin, and they can go to church on Sundays. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They're not willing to change their lifestyle. So, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want our heart to be pure. And out of a pure heart stems 
good works, not for selfish gain or selfish ambition, but because we want to give and we want to help people. We don't want to be that carnal Christian that we're sitting there smoking, doing drugs, popping pills, but then you're going to church on Sundays. God wants to deliver you because we want to be those spiritual Christians who Paul says, I can give you the meat of the word of God. I can feed you with strong meat. I can entrust to you the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And I know that you're going to be a good steward. Praise him through the hard times. Praise him through the difficult times. Praise him for everything that's happened in your past. Praise him for everything that's happening right now. Praise him for what's going to happen in your future. God is a great God. God is a holy God. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defile the temple, which is your body, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Do not destroy this temple. Do not feed it junk food. Do not cut it. Do not, I would even go so far as to say, as a Christian, I would recommend not tattooing, tattooing, your body. In the Old Testament, the Bible said, do not put any permanent markings on your skin. We live in the New Testament, but at the same time, hallelujah, your body is holy. Your body is righteous. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And in the Old Testament, again, God said, do not put any permanent markings on your body. And it's not addressed in the New Testament. Now, if you do, you're not going to be spiritually unclean, but it's just a very good idea not to tattoo your body. If you have tattoos, it is what it is. Hallelujah. Praise God. God can cover them. God is great. God is good. God is holy. But again, really seek the Lord as far as not defiling your temple. He says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So if you defile this temple, God is going to destroy you. Your temple is holy. The temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Hallelujah. God lives inside of you and he loves you and his Holy Spirit can cover a multitude of sins. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter what you said, God is here with his forgiveness and his love. If you would like to get in touch with me, I'm Pastor Gemma Winger. You can go to my website, GemmaWinger.com. I have church meetings every Monday night and Friday night in West Los Angeles at 7.30 p.m., and you can get the address on the website. If you would like to donate to this worldwide ministry, you can go to GemmaWinger.com and donate through PayPal. I also have a radio show that's on KKLA 99.5 every Sunday at 1 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can go to KKLA.com, or again, the archive shows are on my KKLA page at GemmaWinger.com. Hallelujah. God is so good. And I also have a book, Redeeming the Screens. I was a contributing author. You can get that at Amazon. Also, Creative Ways to Build Christian Community. I was mentioned, as well as my mom, in that book. That can also be purchased at Amazon. Dot com. If you'd like to get the books through my website, you can go donate at $30 and I will send it to you. You can email your address and um, all the information that I would need to mail you a book, Redeeming the Screens. Hallelujah. I love you so much. Jesus loves you so much. And it's his spirit. It's his power. Hallelujah. He is the one who's going to give the increase. So get saturated with the spirit of the living God and watch what God does in your life. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Mm -hmm.